Greetings Bunnisters, Payot here and this will be my honest AF review for Don't Nod's latest game. First thing first, there will be zero spoilers about the game in this review. The footage I will be showing is the very opening with the game without the intro cinematic so nothing gets spoiled. I will not be using subtitles, I will not be performing anything that will destroy your experience. In my eyes, the health of your first interaction with the game is much more important than me producing a flashy review. So take that for what it is and let's talk Bannisters. I came into this world visiting after I was done with the world of Vampire. Don't Nod's previous Vampire epic. I am a big fan of Vampire. I think that it posts sublime atmosphere some interesting combat mechanics based on the Souls-like genre and an extremely tight social interaction system. Vampir tried to be more than the RPG where you have dialogue with the characters around you. The characters became the very pillar upon which the game was constructed. Airtight, going from point A to point B in a semi-linear fashion, giving you some room to maneuver without detracting from the focus of the storytelling which, to me at least, should always take priority when we're dealing with titles that want to be considered story driven. Reed was a tragic protagonist caught between his previous profession and dedication to helping people and his newfound power and weakness as an undead. It was very interesting to follow, very intriguing, it gave you substantial choice when it came to whether you would make or break the already fragile society around him. So here comes Bannisters, and if you've watched the trailers, and I suppose you have, otherwise you wouldn't know about this game, the marketing has been abysmal, you control Antea and Red, Red and Antea, in their quest to banish the evil that has befallen New Eden. You also know what happens to one of these characters pretty early in the game, and by pretty early I mean the first 40 minutes. I'm not gonna mouth it out because I don't wanna spoil anything as I said, and I'll try to keep it discreet throughout the whole thing. Again, if you watch just one trailer of this game, just one presentation, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I will try to keep it under the hood. Don't nod for Bannisters, like 99.9% .9 of the studios out there opted for an open world approach to this game. If there is any higher power out there, save us from this because it has polluted pretty much every kind of game there is. So, taken out of London and into the wild, literally in this case, we lose the tight focus of the storytelling, trading it for gathering materials in the bog, gathering materials in the forest, and so on and so forth. Formulaic quest design, where you go to point A and click A to investigate, then you go to point B and click A to investigate, very, very thin character interactions, and, to top everything off, rare occurrences where you actually talk to NPCs. That is my biggest gripe with the game. If you want to tell a story about the tragedy of lovers, of characters, of people who tried to do good and ended up in a mess that they were not responsible for, you have to make them a part of an ecosystem of sentient beings with whom they can share their woes and listen to those beings' woes in return. Here you are a banisher, you're supposed to send the dead to the other side. And you send the dead to the other side either because they're random spawns in an endlessly respawning cycle in open environments or after you receive a request to do so. Those requests analogically to what you will be doing if you want to 100% this game are very few and far between. You end up running here and there, the characters exchange some quips which are very well written, I have to give you that, but you are lost in the grander environment and not in the scheme of things. You are not absorbed by the story, you're just getting busy work done. 
are with 99% of open world games. The latest victim was the very poorly directed God of War Ragnarok, where they would try to take the stakes up 100%, but you were collecting tomatoes and poems and finding the long dead Viking Jarls to kill them and take their loot. So apart from my personal gripes with the open world architecture of most recent games, let's talk about the core mechanics of this game. At heart, Bannisters tries to be an action RPG. You make choices when it comes to some of the pivotal characters and upgrade your characters in return to make them more potent, mainly in combat. There is nothing that you can change on your character that will come to be helpful in social interacting. You will gather resources and money, put those together, upgrade the stuff that you found by tracking the environment, and sadly, the whole process of finding sand gear tends to be recycled again and again and again. One of the characters gets a new ability, now you can open a new path a la Metroidvania or quote unquote search action, and then you go in there, open a chest, and said chest will hold a piece of equipment or something else that you can then use your accumulated resources to upgrade and try on par with what you already have. There are nests that need cleaning and there are fights that have to be fought supposedly because you have to banish some entity that has manifested. In order to bring forth those enemies you perform specific rituals very few of those you don't actually have to interact with them in any meaningful manner just pick from a list and the character performs the incantation and brings forth the enemy or the spirit and you interact with it either in combat or dialogue as i said without any skills tied to what you can actually say or do to them the vast majority of this game's duration is a means to a specific end which you pick pretty early on. You have a choice about how you're gonna handle one of these two characters. And the game keeps reminding you via very intrusive pop-ups that if you commit to this you have to do it from start to finish and then you have to take an oath about doing what you promised to do and keep shoving down your throat the fact that there is no organic decision making at work here. If you want to get any cohesive results out of your trekking, you have to either do A or do B, be divided into two subcategories that really don't change anything, it's just how kind or mean you want to be towards the spirits. And if you stray from that path, you pretty much lock yourself out of specific outcomes. It is extremely by the book, not a shred of experimentation here. On top of everything else, the amount of time you spend in the open world is preposterous because the game starts strong. It builds this amazing atmosphere in this tavern, in this village, and you try to understand what is happening. This is a new IP, a new world. You know pretty much nothing about these people. They're just vanishers, which we don't yet know what it means. And they came here to do something that we don't yet know what it means. There is intrigue, there is mystery. But after I climbed my 90th cliff, painted with yellow paint, like it's Resident Evil 4 Remake or pretty much every other game with open environments, I was really starting to question my sanity. And man, please... Please bring back the jump button in games. These context-sensitive traversal mechanics are ridiculous. They take so much out of the proceedings. Direct application of the player's will on the avatar is paramount in gaming. We're not watching, we're participating. You don't have to be God of War Ghost Edition. Although my initial thoughts would be that this would be the Witcher Ghost Edition, it lacks a lot of the nuance when it comes to character interactions and the tactical depth of combat and how you build your character is very much absent. Everything when it comes to the action is serviceable, I don't want to come out too mean. You have a light attack, you have a heavy attack, you have some abilities with Red, some abilities with Antea, you can combine them and the game puts emphasis on swapping between the character and performing powerful combos. If you kinda turn your brain off and just go along for the ride, I don't know, drinking beer, smoking some cigs, eating pizza, going to collect mushroom number 1057, you will probably get more out of the experience than I did. But for me, Don't Not has always been about the narrative, what they're trying to say, 
how they're trying to deal with their characters. Here the focus of our characters is just foraging and it detracts immensely from the experience. I'm gonna talk tech. The game looks quite good. I played it on a 4K B-Cast TV with everything pretty much set to max. DLSS was running ultra quality and the game was running 100 frames on a 3070 Ti. No issues whatsoever. I had just one crash, but that was because I was alt tabbing to save my gameplay. Sound is nigh perfect and the voice work is phenomenal. This is a part where I get even angrier with the game. Because if you can do this well when characters are speaking with each other, why not have more of this and less of the generic collectathon? Of course, good writing doesn't necessarily substitute for paper thin characters. And here my problem was that you have to make a decision about the fate of certain characters, a la vampire. But what you ultimately do is just a change to how people are predispositioned towards you. The society that's presented here is fractured to a point where the parts you're moving don't really matter. And it's a real shame because, as I said earlier, London was an entity in Vampire. You could smell the tension, you would take in every area and say, if this guy goes, although he is a son of a bitch, this will come crumbling down. And here they're just mannequins. What should have been done here, if I might say so myself, and I am not an active game developer, is focus on these characters, their goals, and these controlled, directed environments. They kinda shot themselves in the knee with the open world approach because other studios with more resources and more experience in that regard are doing the same thing better and probably in a more impressive manner. These environments are notes on maps. It's not Elden Ring, where there is a natural and organic sense of exploration. You just approach something, the character says something, and then on your huge ass map, a little dot appears and you know something is there. It's all lies, smokes and mirrors. You are playing a video game, man. That's not don't nods approach or hasn't been so far it's not about the characters here it's about burning hours because this game will take 30 hours to complete if you want to go 100 percent and the meat and bones of it is 12. the rest is just mediocre combat in pretty much the most boring environment you can imagine is the pretty forest and the pretty bog where you find the key and you open a chest and then you go five steps ahead and you find a checkpoint they say that they found the checkpoint they need to rest beside that checkpoint is another key look at the map decipher what you're watching go find the loot equip the loot try the loot what happened to the story in between we don't remember where we are man we have to go get more stones to upgrade that sword it has its merits there is no universe out there where vampire is considered a disaster and it doesn't hold any positive characteristics to be someone's favorite game but what is done here is damaging to the creation itself to the entity that this game is trying to be they have the characters they have the premise a totally original premise by the way and instead of going knee deep in what these characters are all about they opted for generic open world adventure number 86 in a genre that's oversaturated and narratively has very few things to offer i can't in good conscience say that it is a bad game but if you're watching this review you are a don't nod person you don't play video games to hack and slash the ghosties and get the mats you're playing these games because you want these to be people and not cgi automatons and that itch i am sad to say will not be scratched the game fails to uphold the identity of the studio and to keep you invested in the characters and its world we did not need another search the woods game in 2024 we needed a game with soul characters that have something to say and consequences that's been the studio's entire mo and sadly it's sorely missed here. Banishers is not what you would call a bad video game.
but it is so gamey, so predictable, so formulaic, and sadly, not very rememberable. This is it, people. My review for Banishers. Don't nod latest. Don't let me deter you from trying the game. I am always for supporting developers of the smaller size and those that try to bring us original things, hit or miss. If you enjoyed Vampyr, there is a shred of its DNA here, but it won't be enough to keep you happy if you were expecting a game of a similarly original approach. Thank you so much for watching, sub, like and hit the bell for more, and until next time be well, stay frosty and always strive for perfection. Cheers!